Hello there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 4 and we are almost, as you can see, finished with the festival playlist. We are 97% on the series, all that remains is this final 9% on the final season. We've got three dailies to do, we have cleared off all of the other challenges except for the trial. Now, this is notoriously an annoying one to do. Because what the trial requires is that you and up to five other human players have to race against six unbeatable level Drivatar AI players. You basically all have to finish uh, at an average of third or above. It can be very volatile because you'll get people who will just be solidly at the back and not pulling their weights, which is fine, but it requires other people to then be racing well. It can also take a while just to queue between events, uh, I've got 24 seconds until the next one. It's every few minutes it seems that a new session is created. So we have a few possibilities, uh, it's got to be 70s cars in this example. I had previously tuned up this Lancia more around handling, but we've got the custom tune on the Alarm Sprint, which is a bit more about the performance side of things. So immediately I can see that this is going to be tough. We've only got two other people with 700s and we've got three stock Carrera 73s that are kind of going to languish behind a little bit. However, what that does is that does reduce the average level of the driver cars. So they're also only around the 630 odd mark. That means that I should at least be able to get further ahead and maybe we can counteract some of the more lackluster performance of our patrons. Ooh, this thing does not handle well though. And that's the problem, is that most of my tunes, when I'm trying to manually tune something, I prefer handling and making it easier to control. However, that will generally not get you ahead in these races because the un- Eatable driver tars just have <laughs> really good moves, funnily enough. So what you really need is to be able to just have a bunch of power to get ahead, and then you just need to be good enough to stay ahead. And that is tough. Once you're ahead, you can kind of block and drive defensively. I mean, I don't even need to get into first place necessarily. They're getting an extra 150 points by me being in second. So ideally I want to. I can also try and just kind of push them around a little bit too. I'm in a very light car though, but I seem to have knocked them a little bit offline. So now I'm doing all that I can by just getting ahead and hopefully staying ahead. If another human player comes up and overtakes me that's fine we're not here racing for pride some people seem to forget that and will just knock you around all over the track i'm just very firmly going to keep in mind that this is a cooperative race <laughs> so i prefer not to get in the way of my other players if i can avoid it it can be tricky obviously when it comes to like breaking for corners and stuff we do seem to have the legs on the Corvette, so we're going faster, but our cornering is amazingly worse than, okay, it's just our braking really, the cornering isn't so bad, but our braking is horrific, unfortunately he also crashed there, so that pushes him back into third, and that actually matters because uh, we need that extra couple of hundred points swing in order to win this, or we need someone else to move up just one spot. And that's often what it comes down to in these sorts of races, um, is either the AI need to get wiped out, which I think he just did, so that's good, hopefully that'll help, uh, or you just need some people to not come last, basically. <laughs> so we've done all we can. We've won. I mean, that's, we've got the maximum points and we've not given any away. That's all we can do. Now we just have to wait out the remainder and see what happens. So someone actually dropped out entirely. If you're coming last in these sorts of races, that's one of the best things you can do for the rest of the team. Is take one for the team, realize, okay, we're losing. 
uh, I'll quit and therefore not give away 600 points. Unfortunately, it looks like that isn't going to happen and we're going to lose by 150 points. Yep, because two people were selfish. Great. <laughs> so we've got to win the next two races. On to the next. So I'm starting up the front of the grid, which is good. It means we can immediately get ahead. And immediately have the AI get in my way. That just happens, unfortunately. Got to remember that my brakes are terrible. It is actually useful when more people drop out, and sometimes the worst that you appear to be doing as a team, the more likely some people will drop out. And so long as it's not other people who are also doing well, that just further increases the amount of points you get, simply just by removing the amount that the AI are winning. Crunch, yep, see there we go. Well, I guess we... We helped someone by being their backstop, so I guess you're welcome. That guy's an AI, so we don't care about disrupting him. The guy in front of us, though, is the Corvette, that is, is a human player. So we don't want to get in their way, necessarily. But the scout, or whatever this is up here. See, that was uncalled for. What were you doing? He just rammed into me even when I was giving him the line. That's so, so weird. There's some really anti-social driving sometimes in these challenges. It's like, dude, I am a human player. What is wrong with you? Some people just don't know, either can't read the map or the grid and think that other players are AI or just don't know what they're doing. Okay, that was annoying. <laughs> that was just traffic, unfortunately. But, I mean, in some ways, I don't mind because it's got me further back from that maniac who was not driving well. And we'll be able to catch up. We've got two people, one and two. I should be able to get back up into third. And I don't necessarily need to anyway, so... That's fine. If I'm not welcome up the front, and they're just going to keep pushing me around, then I will just hang back, race as cleanly as I can, not miss the checkpoints. If I can catch up, great. Uh, now they're just letting the other guys through, though. That's the annoying thing. I mean, this, this corner section is really tricky considering I cannot brake properly in this car. But alright, it looks like we've probably done it. There we go. Unassailable lead on that one. So even if the remaining people are DNFs, it shouldn't matter. And in fact, what looks like has happened is a lot of the AI just haven't been able to finish. I think they just crashed into the traffic at the end. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, it gave us the win on the first race after all, it seems. I guess maybe because some of the computer drivers DNF'd? Don't know. Either way, we've somehow pulled it out and done it on this, uh, which I did not expect after the performance in the first race. Unfortunately, unlike in Forza 5, which if you're two up, it will just end the event and give you the win, this we have to do the third race regardless. So this one's just for pride, really? I mean, we've got the 2-0, which is good. But you've got to finish the third race regardless. What even happened there? Yeah, sometimes what seems to happen on the screen? I don't know whether it's just because of like network latency or something, but there'll be some very weird movements from especially the AI cars. I don't understand it but never mind 
We'll just try and stay out of trouble. And unfortunately, we are obliged to finish out the final race. It is interesting, sometimes you'll be ahead and you'll see people just drop out of the session. It's like, hmm, you, you do realise you actually have to finish, right? And it's especially annoying because sometimes they'll decide to serve up, like, the Colossus as the final track of the series so then you're obliged to do the longest road race in the game just to get the win but i mean it's all good practice you don't have to do well but i always think of it as an opportunity to just try and get better really Seems we've got the legs on these guys going up the hill. I hope I pushed him into traffic. Got a tight corner up the top here. That's where the performance tuning comes into its own. And why going for a custom tune is quite handy sometimes, because, like I said at the top, I tend to prefer to tune around performance so I would have brakes that work and I would have better suspension so I'd be able to corner better which would make all of this much nicer but I would probably only be doing like 150 up that hill or something much as what they were essentially doing makes it really hard to take the higher spots so if you actually want to win you've just got to Lay down the power, and try and control it the best you can. And well, it seems to have worked this time. And there we have it. Championship winners. We managed to pull it out. And that completes the, I believe, final challenge of the season. Here we go, Encore, complete all activities in a single festival playlist series. Mission complete. That is the achievement that we were chasing this month. And there we are, 100%, 100%. Everything is cleared because we got all three of those outstanding daily challenges in those races, which I kind of expected. That's why I didn't try and chase them down separately. And now I guess we see what comes next for Forza Horizon 4 uh, in terms of weekly content. Uh, no longer going to have the festival playlist uh, series and the special cars that you unlock through this due to their licensing issues and the fact that the game is going to be delisted by the end of the year however they have said that they're still going to have some amount of like daily and weekly challenges throughout and you'll be able to earn the backstage passes which you can redeem for existing cars from previous seasons that you might have missed and of course there's a lot more to the game than just the festival playlist that's just the kind of social content throughout the the weekly lifetime of the game if all you're after is just a fun arcade racing simulator you could just buy it now anyway and still enjoy all of this content that there is to offer in multiplayer or single player there's dlc that i haven't explored yet fortune island i have not yet visited there's the lego speed champions valley which is just a fever dream of content that we might get into in a later time and there's several businesses that you can even engage in which has small little encapsulated storylines that follow a business through 10 chapters uh, different challenges for each chapter that give you up to three stars obviously you're trying to get 30 out of 30 stars and you get different rewards based on your progress through those and you get a daily payment for participating in the business basically for your investment and you can get up to like 20,000 credits or something a day for each of them so you end up getting a daily stipend of maybe 100,000 credits or more which is kind of handy to pay for upgrades and such but that's all that we're going to do for now I'm still not feeling 100% I'm not going to dive into any more of the long form content just yet 
We've got a few more months to show this game off before it's delisted and no longer able to be purchased. After that point, I probably won't create content for it anymore because it feels a little bit bad rubbing it into other people who can't play the game. But uh, yeah, that's not for a while yet, and I feel that about ooh, four months, that's a long time to still be able to enjoy a game. So if you like what you see, add it to your wish list. Pick it up on sale, probably. <laughs> and otherwise, just sit back and enjoy the content as it gets created, and uh, we'll see you next time.